The Cryo Rig H7 performs really well for its price point, but how well can it perform with one small tweak? I recently did a video comparing the Cooler Master Hyper 212X to the Cryo Rig H7. If you're interested in the results of that video, do have a look. I've got it posted in the video description below. It's quite an interesting video. But one of the main takeaways about the H7 that I had in that video is the fact that it's got a pretty rubbish fan. And um, I kind of thought that this was holding the, 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 the cooler back quite a bit. So I decided I'm going to use a baller fan on it and see how much of a difference it makes. What fan did I decide to go with? Well, let's have a look and find out. Now let's put the EK Vardar F4 on the Cryo Rig H7 and see what happens. Installation is fairly simple, especially when you have the fan off. You just take these little clips out of the old fan, and there we go, they're out, and then you just slip them into your Vardar. There we go, one in, and yes, you get the idea. And with the fan attached, it creates a sleek black finish that somehow makes me angry at EA for some reason. But now it's time to power on the beast and see how the fan performs on the Cryo Rig H7. Okay, so um, we've got the Vardor installed and we've got some stuff running. We're actually looking at Ida 64 and the idle is at around 30, between 30 and 32, which is around the same ballpark as it was with a stock fan. So I'm going to run the stress test and see what happens. Okay, so something happened that I didn't expect at all. Um, I don't know if you can actually see on the camera what the temperatures are, but it's at exactly the same temperature range as it was before. Uh, it's sitting at around 68 degrees Celsius. So the fan made literally no difference, um, which is really weird considering that the fan's currently running at 2000 plus RPM, which is 500 more than the maximum of, of the cryo rig fan over here. So that makes absolutely no sense. Well, it actually does because if you look at the actual cooler, um, half of the fan, or like pretty much a third of the fan, isn't actually blowing onto, onto the, 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 the fin array. And I think that the Vardar is optimized for a situation where it's completely covered um, in the front by a radiator. And when it's pushing through, um, it kind of there's a seal around the actual openings in the fan in the front So it's only pushing air through a certain direction whereas with the cryo rig that isn't happening um, So I think that's why even with a higher rpm you're getting the exact same temperatures I think the results of this test are fairly interesting um, I'm really surprised that it didn't make any difference now I've already given one reason to why I think it didn't make any difference um, but I also think it's because the actual fin stack is just saturated. It can't deal with any more heat, regardless of how much airflow you throw at it. Um, so I think Cryorig was actually really smart in how they, in what fan they paired with the H7, because it meant that uh, the fan, the actual cooler, could be cheaper because 
putting a, a more expensive fan on it doesn't make any difference supposedly. If you actually changed the fan out on your H7 and got better performance, do let me know what kind of increase you got and what the fan was that you used. Maybe the Vardar just is completely unoptimized for this use case, which is pretty likely. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, do like and subscribe to the channel. Share it with your friends because maybe they'll also enjoy it. If you disliked it, dislike it and leave some hate comments below. That's always interesting to read. Um, yes, I think that's all for me. Thank you. Bye-bye.